morning. Thank you. First and foremost, tell me about your organization and, and, what, and uh, what is the aim of the organization? Africans Rising is a new movement to build Pan-African unity across the continent, premised on justice, dignity, and peace. Mm -hmm. So in, on the justice terms, illicit financial flows is key to that. Um, mm -hmm. We lose between 50 and 100 billion US dollars a year through tax evasion and various forms of corruption, misinvoicing, mm -hmm. and uh, various tax breaks that governments give to large corporations. Mm -hmm. So that's part of the justice. The peace is an end to the ongoing violence that Africans ex experience on a daily basis throughout the continent from South Africa. People were killed in protests, or, you know, uh, through the DRC, which remains a war zone even now, South Sudan, where violence has uh, erupted again. And uh, the, the, the dignity part is about the fact that for too long now, Africans throughout the continent have been focused on mere survival. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's, not, that's not a human existence. Mm -hmm. you know, we, we should be focused on becoming a healthy, prosperous, and pe peaceful continent, mm -hmm. not just on the basics of trying to survive on a daily basis. The richest continent in relation to resources, but the poorest when it comes to finances. Now, you are blaming the IMF and the World Bank for inaction. Why is mm -hmm. that? Well, global tax deals, tax deals that are structured in in-country or across regions, etc., are stuff, you know, these, these, are, these are arrangements which ha they exist, the financial oversight to attend to them. Mm. And in that process, the, the World Bank as such, being the, the, the grandfather, if you like, of the Bretton Woods institutions, which were set up to create a fairer world order after World War II, mm -hmm. are ignoring this. They, mm -hmm. they, they have no contribution. They're, they're not making anything positive towards the process of going, well, this is actually unfair because mm -hmm. you are losing all of this money through what should have been paid in taxes. And on the other side, we pretend to be giving you aid. So in the end, so the entire African continent could do well without aid mm -hmm. if the companies which operated here merely paid their taxes. Mm -hmm. Is there a sense that they are complicit, the World Bank and IMF, in the practices of illicit outflows out of Africa? This is a tricky one to prove directly, mm -hmm. but there is an example. For example, the African Renewable Energy Initiative was set up by African countries to be able to uh, increase the uptake in renewable en energy in South Africa. It's the ARE. Uh, AREI, sorry, uh, not mm -hmm. just South Africa, the African mm -hmm. continent. And it was structured well. And the rules about how the energy, uh, the renewable energy projects are established, the community consultations, the environmental impacts, beautifully done. Mm. What do the multilateral institutions do, the European Union Party, etc.? They allow projects which have not gone through that process to be counted as projects towards renewable energy in Africa. Mm. And these kinds of projects are the ones which don't allow the local communities to benefit from mm -hmm. them. So beneficiation is key, and that's what's lost here. Totally, mm -hmm. in, in many instances. Are you also suggesting then that the aid being given to Africa is then being offset by these illegal outflows out of the country, or of the continent rather? Yeah, the aid, the aid is merely a farce. Mm -hmm. it's, uh, that's the simplest way to put it. There, there is no other way to describe it. If, if we had the, the companies, the multinational corporations, the local companies which work throughout the continent extracting resources, producing goods, selling sugar, our oil, mm -hmm. diamonds, etc., if they merely paid the tax that was due and was legitimately mm -hmm. due to the, the host countries where they operated, mm -hmm. there would be no need for aid. Now, you did indicate that it's, uh, it's hard to prove that the World Bank and IMF is involved in, in, in illicit outflows, but who is actually the main drivers then of these illicit outflows? Is it only international companies investing or is it aid companies investing in Africa? I think the drivers of illicit financial flows on the African continent are multiple. Mm -hmm. They are partly political because uh, governments uh, enter into uh, trade agreements with other countries and in doing that they tend to give up the right to claim taxation on the basis that there is investment. Mm -hmm. However, if you look at the Niger Delta 
one of the largest oil producing regions on the continent, uh, the companies which operate there claim they've invested 8.22 billion naira in those communities. Now those communities comprise of 60,000 people. But if you had been there, you would see there is not a school, there is not a clinic, there is not a hospital. They, if you take that money and divide it by the 60,000 people who live there, they would have schools, they would have houses, plus they would have almost 20,000 naira a month income mm -hmm. from the oil. Mm -hmm. So it, it's not adding up. The numbers mm -hmm. don't add up. You know, this is the, the Tabo and Becky panel that investigated this made it very clear yes. that the numbers are not adding up in terms of what mm -hmm. is happening here. Now, we know now that money is leaving the continent, but where does this money go and who benefits? Well, it's not us, <laughs> that's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> the, the, money, you know, the, the money trail needs to be followed to its end, but right now it would appear that many multinational corporations as well as complicit corrupt politicians, right. uh, the nuclear deal in South Africa is an excellent example of corruption and illicit financial flows. Mm -hmm. So South Africa has created a nuclear deal with the Russians, of which no South African knows anything about. Hmm. You know, the details are only starting to come to light because of court processes. Mm -hmm. But the reality is that the money that would be generated from this, where will it go? It's mm -hmm. going to go back to Russia. So there's complicity between the politicians involved. Sometimes it's between governments, but generally governments are led by politicians. Mm -hmm. so. European countries has been identified as some of the beneficiaries here in, in, in this illicit outflows of Africa. Are they being targeted? And I know that the Tabo Mbeki Foundation started with or the Tabo Mbeki uh, a probe into this. They started looking at this money to recoup it. Is there any possibility of success? I think there is good possibility of success. Mm -hmm. if, if we are committed to doing this, uh, it, it's, it's, it's the same with the fight against apartheid, for example. Yes. While it may have seemed like it was an impossible thing to have achieved, mm -hmm. the fact that there was a, a degree of commitment amongst people to end a practice that was inhumane. Illicit mm -hmm. financial flows, like uh, the illegal settlements in the West Bank, they, these, these are inhumane things. Mm -hmm. they, they're not, they do not serve any purpose to humanity other than to oppress other human beings. Now, Mr. Lachman, on the 25th of May, we understand that Africans Rising will officially launch the African Liberation Day, hashtag uh, 25th May 2017, with events throughout the continent. What are you planning and what's, uh, what's in store? Uh, there are many things in store uh, that are happening uh, locally mm -hmm. uh, in South Africa, in Yeovil just mm -hmm. down the street from here. The Africa Diaspora Forum is hosting um, a soccer tournament, for example, that brings together players from various continents. 44 different countries will be represented in that tournament. So th it's a range of activities. In, in mm -hmm. Gori Island, um, which is off mm -hmm. the coast of Senegal, there will be a, a commemoration of the beginning of such of the slave trade, mm -hmm. which uh, has a huge impact on the African continent. That was the illicit financial flows of the past, where, mm -hmm. you know, in the past, uh, the Americans and various others actually stole human beings. Now they're stealing money. So it's uh, the Gori Island celebration is to acknowledge that the history of stealing human beings to turn them into slaves is... Mm -hmm is where part of the history of the continent comes from, and we need to acknowledge that. Mm -hmm. uh, there are events in virtually every part of the continent. Our website's the best place to get there, or mm -hmm. on Twitter. Just follow at yes. Africans Rising, hashtag Africans Rising. Um, we're strong on Twitter. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we, you keep up to date there. Mr. Lachman, I think this is uh, one of the conversations, the starting point, where we need to, to have a lot more time to discuss the issues. But thank you so much Definitely. for coming in and joining us. Great. Thank you. That was Representative for Africans Rising, Jess Latchman, here in studio. We're going to continue this discussion in a short while, so you don't want to miss it. We're talking about illicit outflows out of the continent. But we are.